if you want to grow high yield healthy plants regardless of where you live whether it's an apartment if you have acreage a small lot large lot and you want to do with minimal amount of work and minimal amount of cost you want to do container gardening I'm going to show you a way how you can use the most useful container in container gardening have the plants automatically watered regardless whether it's a drought or it's a downpour not have to worry about whether your fertilizer is being washed out or dried up making sure that the soil has the right sweetness to it and have basically a hands-off experience with and a very successful experience with gardening so let's get started the most popular container in container gardening for vegetables and fruits is a five gallon bucket your five gallon bucket probably looks something like this you may have it raised up off the ground you have probably drilled some holes in the bottom to let the water run out so you're ninety percent there with the because you've got the right container but what the problem is is you're having to water from the top which could be washing away your fertilizer if it rains your fertilizer could be be washed away and you never really know whether your plant has the right amount of water so what you really need to do is have the plant draw the water up from the bottom and be able to take as much water as it wants not to give it as much water as you think it needs we're going to cover all that here in this container gardening video series so let's get started with the container what I have found to work the very best to wick up water out of the water reservoir into the plant bucket is a piece of cotton either an old uh, sock that's worn out maybe an old uh, dish towel a pair of jeans uh, here you just cut a strip tie a knot in the end of it same thing with the pair of jeans I like the sock because I don't have to cut anything I just do a, a loose overhand knot here I cut a one inch hole into the center of the bucket and then I just pull the uh, sock down through the bucket so that the knot is at the top. There I go. And now I have an automatic self wicking system that I don't have to worry about my potting mix getting down into the watering bucket and getting that all dirty. Another advantage of using a sock is as I'm working on it, the sock is flexible. So if I need to take the bucket out, I can just set it on the ground and not have to worry about um, it causing a problem because the, the sock will just fold up underneath the bucket. So if I ever need to get inside here and check to see how, and the water level or make any adjustments in here, I simply take this bucket out with the sock in it and the plant, put it on the ground, and I'm good to go to work in the, into the bucket. This is the result of some testing I did over about a 12 hour period. Uh, this is uh, just a container of water and then I've got a 100% cotton uh, t-shirt that I cut up in a 3 inch strip tied a uh, loose knot on it and I added some fo uh, food coloring to the water so you could see the, where the water is. Um, then let that absorb. Here's the sock that I mentioned earlier and then here is I took a man's small size t-shirt, 100% cotton, uh, cut off three inches from the bottom, used the three inches over here, uh, just going across the waist. Um, then here I, I cut off just below the armpits, rolled it up, tied a, a loose knot in it, and uh, used that as a wick. Uh, between the three, actually, the sock has done a little bit better. And this sock is not 100% cotton, which is surprising to me. It's, the, uh, it's a crew sock, men, men's crew sock, uh, so it's about 50% cotton, then it's got some nylon and rayon or spandex or something in it to kind of make it um, fit your foot. But um, any one of these three works. It looks like the more material you have, uh, it works better, and the sock worked the best so far. So anything um, that has cotton in it I think will work well and be able to use the capillary and wicking action to get the water from the water basin up through uh, the one inch hole into the plant uh, container to water your plants. Inside the water container bucket I have hoses coming in feeding the water in. I've got little rocks holding the hoses down underwater. 
and then the hose is coming out and I could continue this going on forever. Because we're using a wicking process to get the water to the plants, we need to have the right soil mix. And so we're going to create our own so we know exactly it has the right proportions. We're going to use sphagnum peat moss, 70%. We're going to use 30% perlite. And if you, this is coarse perlite, you could also use vermiculite or a combination of either. It doesn't make any difference. The perlite is to use to soak up the moisture from the bucket below. The perlite is to keep the soil mix loose. Because peat moss is acidic, we're going to use some agricultural limestone. It's also known as dolomite uh, to sweeten the soil. So I'll go ahead and mix that up. To get the 70-30 mix, I simply filled up a bucket full of peat moss, dumped it in the wheelbarrow, and filled up my five gallon bucket again with uh, one third of perlite, dumped it in the barrel, added some water, and mixed it together. We do not add, we do not mix in the, li the limestone or the dolomite. So you want to be able, to, this, this should be moist, but it should not uh, drip water when you wring it, when you squeeze it in your hands. So now I'm going to fill up my container. Now I'm going to plant this tomato plant into this uh, container gardening bucket. And because it's so tall, I'm going to take advantage of that and plant probably all the way up to here inside the bucket. So typically I would fill up the bucket now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the plant in and uh, fill it up around the plant. I'll probably I'll take these two branches off and this will all become a root system for the tomato plant, which will make it a lot healthier. I put in about three quarters of a cup, a cup of uh, agricultural limestone or dolomite. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this in to about the top two or three layers of soil to help sweeten, sweeten up that soil. Then when I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and fill up just to the, to the top of the barrel with the rest of the mixing soil. Now that I've got the soil to the top, what I'm going to do is add my fertilizer. It's very important that you don't have the fertilizer touching the, the roots of the plants. What we're going to do is we're going to add a fertilizer ring around the outside here and as the uh, water percolates up and it comes down it'll start bringing the fertilizer down so that the plant can get all the, the nutrition that it needs. Same idea with the dolomite. What I've, I've chosen here is a very even 10-10-10 mixture. You don't want anything much higher than that, maybe it's definitely no, no higher than 15, 15, 15, but something that's balanced, something that is a continuous release, not a slower release, um, otherwise the plant won't get the nutrition that it needs. So let's go ahead and make our fertilizer ring. Okay, I have my fertilizer ring around the tomato, and now I'm going to mound dirt over it. So I'm going to actually create a mound so that, so like a, there's a dome here, I'm going to put plastic over it. The mound covers the dirt, uh, the fertilizer, so the fertilizer um, nutrition goes into, in, down into the soil. And the second thing I'm going to do is put a plastic bag over it so that it helps retain water and use the water circulation process of drawing from the top and then going back down. Okay, hopefully you can see that we have a mound going here and uh, that'll help with what I mentioned just a moment ago. Now, let me explain what is not in this soil. We do not have manure in this soil. We do not have sand in this soil. Uh, if you don't want to mix your own uh, soil mix here, then get a potting mix, not a potting soil. Uh, you want something that's light. It's going to be primarily the peat moss with some perlite or vermiculite in it in the 70 to 30 ratio if possible. The reason why we don't want to use fertilizer in here not because it's not a good idea. If you come from square foot gardening, then you know using a combination of three or more different fertilizers really adds the nutrition to the, to the soil. But what happens with the fertilizer, and they become heavy, and what happens, well, that, that will affect the ability for the soil here to wick up the water from the bottom uh, because it's going to cause this soil to get heavier and heavier over the years. You'll be able to continue using this soil here over and over and over years to come just by dumping it out, fluffing it back up, and putting it back in. Now at the end of the season, what you also want to do is take the soil off the top, put it aside, and dig out that fertilizer that's left over and throw that away. You would add more uh, dolomite like we did before, mix it into the top two, three inches, and make, make, make another ring of fertilizer with new fertilizer, and then mound it like we have here. That way you'll be able to 
get a great return on your investment in the perlite and the uh, peat moss that you bought to uh, pot your plants in. Now let's say for example we're planting more than one plant here. And instead of planting just a tomato which was in the center uh, which allows us to make a ring of fertilizer so it's not touching the plant. Let's say for example we want to plant lettuce and uh, other things in here. Well then what we would do is we would make a, a kind of a hole in the center and put the fertilizer in the center and put the plants all around the outside. That way the fertilizer is still there, the plants can get it, but it's not actually touching the plant roots. Let's go ahead and cover it up with the plastic. Okay, what I have here is just a regular kitchen trash bag, probably small or medium. I'm just going to cut an X in it. I'm not even going to take this apart. I'm just basically going to be double layering it. And then I'm going to slide this over the tomato plant. This is kind of the hard way to do it, but the tomato plant is already in there. Typically what you do is you'd have this already on top of the soil, have it tied down, and then put the cut holes and put the plants in. Okay, now I've got the tomato planted in there. I just kind of slid the, the tomato, the bag over the tomato, didn't damage anything, and get it tied down with a piece of twine. You can use twine, rope, um, zip ties, whatever you like, uh, fishing line, whatever you want to hold that down, but it's not that important. Just as long as you've got that dome there, as you can see, we're already getting some rain. So we're supposed to have a downpour here today and for the next actually two or three days. I'm not concerned about that at all because uh, I, I would be um, concerned about my fertilizer getting washed out with all the rain. But I'm not worried about that because the rain is just going to come off. I'm going to take this right now and just going to bring it over and put it in the watering bucket over there. And then it will be able to drop all the water that it needs and I'll never have to worry about watering it all season long. If you want to find out how to get your container garden completely watered the entire grow season, take a look at my next video. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear, and you'll have great success with your gardening.